Hello, welcome. We started 12 seconds early there. Here is another live show from us here at Digital DJ Tips, answering all your DJing questions. And we're going to get stuck straight in now with our first question of the day. Remember, if you're watching live, you can ask questions. Just type away wherever you're watching this. The first question is from Danny, who says, I'm returning to DJing after 40 years. Danny, you're a good man. But I don't know what gear to use. I'm an old school vinyl DJ. Obviously, everything has changed. What should I be going for? Well, it's a great question. And here at Digital DJ Tips, we get asked it an awful lot. You know what? There's a lot of DJs returning to this game. I always say it's a bit like guitars or playing the drums or playing the synth or whatever. You go to a music shop, right? There's people there of all ages from 14 year olds buying their first guitar up to the synth heads who are, you know, in their 60s and retired and all that. So music covers the whole range and DJ gear, as we've grown up with it, also covers the whole range and there's people doing this of all ilks. So it's not a young person sing exclusively by any means. So good on you, Danny. I'm glad you've got the time to return to all of this. Let me help you find the right gear for you. So really, when you are returning to DJing or when you're starting, but returning to DJing I think is the big one here. Uh, because you've kind of got a music collection already, you kind of know how to DJ already because you've done it in the past. However rusty you are and however much things have changed, you still know the basics, right? So at this point, you are just looking for something that allows you to get right back to where you were as quickly as possible and then start learning all the new things, right? That's what it's all about. And the advice I'd give you doesn't change too much to the advice I'd give a beginner, which is why I also mentioned beginners right there. What you don't want to do is go out, and spend money on something like this. What you see here is a Pioneer DJ Pro DJ setup. It will cost you about the same amount as a small car. And it is what the Pro DJs are using. You go to any club, any half decent club or festival, you're gonna find that this is the gear that they've got. It's a standalone mixer, probably like you remember from your days, although they've got a bit bigger since then. And it's two decks. If you gave up DJing 20 years ago, you'll probably remember CDJs. If you were used to record decks, hey, now it's done on these things. They're called CDJs, but they don't play CDs anymore. That's all another story. My point is you don't need that stuff. In fact, you shouldn't buy that stuff. Two reasons. One, you can do everything you can do on there and more by spending a tenth of the amount. Two, you can get something now for just a few hundred that if you don't like DJing, if you fall out with DJing and you uh, decide it's not for you, then you don't need to have wasted all that money. You can sell it for just a little bit less than you paid for it. So in that way, you're not really losing very much. So we're looking at something smaller, cheaper, that can do everything you remember and loads more, but also that you could play gigs on. We don't want to get you something like, I don't know, this. Which are great, these are, uh, DJs love these little things. You can DJ on planes, you can produce radio shows anywhere and all that kind of thing. But they ain't really, you know, you're gonna be sat there like this and, and, and it's not ergonomic, right? These are, this is a, funnily enough, even though these are only like 60, $70, this is actually a specialized way of DJing. It's for people who know, probably already own big gear, and they just want smaller gear as well, right? So we wanna get something between the two extremes. We wanna get something between the extreme of the pro gear that you can see here, which is way too much money, way too big, etc., and also the uh, tiny gear that I'm holding in my hand here, uh, this tiny gear here, which really is too small. So what are we gonna go for? I'm gonna give you two recommendations because there are two big ways, I mean, there's seven or eight ways of DJing. We've got an article called Seven Ways DJs Play Today over on Digital DJ Tips, which you can go and find, but, there's two main ways. Uh, and the two main ways are using a laptop and what's called a controller, which is a piece of equipment that controls the software on your laptop, that's why it's called a controller. And standalone, where you are using gear that doesn't need a laptop. This is a modern DJ controller. This is a Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4. This controller is the best controller if you are coming to DJing afresh and you just want to get started. We have got DJs who we work with, like James Hype is a good example. Pro DJs playing the world over. They've got these. They use these when they don't want to pull out this. They just DJ on one of these because it's got everything that you need. This is a great little starting point. 300, 350 maybe with the software that you need. And so this is a really good recommendation. The Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4. Two decks, control over your decks here loops, control over effects, which is all laid out in a way that is the same as it's laid out on Pro Gear. And 
well built enough to last the lifetime of the unit three to five years if you're battering the hell out of the thing uh, we've got one of these the previous one the ddj 400 that's five years old we've been using it solidly in the studio still working fine and it's got the little control pads and so on the stuff that you'll find on a higher end dj gear so you can start playing some of the uh doing some of the tricks and so on which i'll talk to you about in a minute so the ddj Flex 4 from Pioneer DJ would be my one recommendation. Another reason I'm recommending this one is it works with Rekordbox, which is Pioneer DJ standard software that you can also use on Pro Club gear, but also with Serato, another very popular platform. And you get a version of both in the box. The version of Rekordbox you get in the box is probably all you'll ever need. Serato is cut down and you're probably going to want to go and buy the big software, the grown-up software, if that's the route you take. But Rekordbox, Pioneer DJ's own software that comes with this, the version that comes with it, the free version, is brilliant. It's got pretty much everything you'll ever need to DJ with in there. So, the Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4, add the laptop that you already own. Uh, hopefully your laptop is not old, old. Anything within the last, say, three years is gonna be fine. Uh, there are features that will need a more powerful laptop. One of the features that does need a more powerful laptop would be stems, which is where you can, in real time, separate the vocals from the drums, from the uh, melody, and so on. But that's kind of getting into advanced stuff. You don't need that. And the software will run without that on pretty much any computer that's not, not ancient. So you've got a laptop already, right? I'm assuming that for this, this going down this route. Uh, you've also got a, uh, now, now you've got a controller. What else do you need? Well, you need some speakers. Any speakers that you've got that can be wired that don't have any delay when you plug in something. So if you've got any speakers with an auxiliary input, could be a home cinema system, could be a hi-fi system, could just be a boom box. As long as when you plug in a wire, and you can test this with your phone or an iPod, you've got knocking around or anything, when you hit play and stop and start and so on, you don't want to hear a gap, you don't want to hear a delay in what you hear coming out of the speakers compared to what you've just done on your phone or iPod or whatever, because that means you'll get the same delay on your computer and that will not be useful for DJing. And generally, it's more modern Bluetooth speakers where even when you put a wire between the DJ gear and the speaker, you still get that delay. Some don't. These are my favorite little speakers, by the way, the little mini rigs, which you can get online. Uh, these don't have latency. They're fantastic. But anyway, any speakers you've got, don't worry too much about buying special speakers now, although if you did want to buy special speakers, KRK monitors are lovely. Uh, just any speaker you've got will be fine to start with. As long as you can have them set up near you, that's the important thing for learning to DJ or relearning to DJ. Uh, and any headphones, as long as you've got some headphones that go over your head and they've got ear cups on them, preferably closed back. You don't want big open back headphones so that they kind of cut the, cut the world out when you put them on. These are Pioneer DJ Q1. These cost $50 or something. Uh, that's fine. Again, they've got to be wired because you can plug them into the unit uh, and you're good to go. And your speakers plug directly into your DJ gear. They don't plug into your laptop. Uh, piece of information that people sometimes get confused about when they're getting back into this. The only other thing I'd recommend is you've probably already got a music collection, right Danny, because you've been doing this a long time, you've been collecting music a long time, you're not a spring chicken, so you probably already own music. Get a Tidal subscription. Tidal is like Spotify, but it works on DJ software. Or if you're into electronic music, you know you're into underground electronic music, get a Beatport subscription. Both of those will work inside Rekordbox and give you access to all the world's music without you having to buy any of it. Uh, add that to the music you already own and you've got a really good starting point for DJing. So that's the computer route. That's the laptop controller route. What's the other route? Well, I'm going to recommend the piece of gear that we had on the table when we kicked off this live stream. The reason I'm recommending this to you is this is a incredible way to get started, again, spending well under a thousand to do so, including a built-in computer. So you don't need to use your laptop. This is all built in here. And so if you don't want to use a laptop, you don't like the idea of using a laptop for DJing, and you just want something that you can use on its own, standalone, this is the one I'm going to recommend. It runs an operating system called Engine DJ. Now, Engine DJ runs in some pro gear, gear, some much more expensive gear than this, but it also runs really nicely in this. And Engine DJ has everything you will need to DJ built into it. It works with two decks. It works with all other kinds of things like lighting. It works with streaming services. It's got Wi-Fi. Uh, it's just really nice software. Uh, I certainly would recommend this for any beginner who just wants to be able to get going without worrying about any of the other stuff because it makes it very, very easy to use. And so 
Engine DJ is the software built into the Newmark Mixstream Pro Go. It's called the Pro Go because it's got a battery built into it. Look, there's no, nothing plugged in here. There's no power. This is powering off its internal battery. It's also got speakers built in, which sound really good for practice. They're not good enough for parties, but they're good for practice. As I say, it's got Wi-Fi. So if you buy a Tidal subscription, streaming subscription as well, that will plug in here or Beatport, as we were saying, if you want to go the electronic route, that will then give you access to all the world's music from here. Again, it's Wi-Fi. There's no need to plug any wires in to access your streaming service there. So this is a really nice way to start. And indeed, I taught my 10 year old to DJ recently. I taught her on this because it's such a good way to get the grasp of DJing without needing to worry about anything else. So the Mixstream Pro Go is definitely my recommendation for you. We've got everything you need there uh, in one unit to get started. And it's good enough, well built enough, got enough features for you to stick with. And so the only other thing that I would say to you is once you've bought that gear, once you've got the software, got the computer and everything, you might start worrying a bit about, look, I did, it was 40 years ago that I used to do this. <laughs> How do I get started again? This gear's got all these features on that I don't understand. They weren't on record decks. So this is advice we always give to new DJs or rather returning DJs when they're, they're like scared by all this stuff. The first task that you've got to do is get back to where you were before. Now, if you think about it, DJing on turntables, you load a track, you adjust the speed, you cue it up where you want to start it, you throw it in and start it, and you mix it over the track you've currently got playing. And then you do it again and again and again. All the controls to do that are on here. You've got your up and down faders, you've got your bass mid and treble controls that you probably remember, you've got your gain controls, you've got your play and pause, and you've got your jog wheel, which is the same as using a turntable, and your speed control. Once you can DJ the way you used to DJ in the past, using the tracks that you've got, then you can move on to learning the digital tricks. The digital tricks are things like key mixing, where you can match the key between the tracks so that they sound nicer when you mix them over each other. Loops, so that you can loop the beginning and end, for instance, to make the mixes easier to do. Cue points, where you can jump between points in the track really nicely, uh, and you can have it all synced up between not only uh, within the track, so when you jump to a different part of the track, it stays on the beat, but with the other deck as well. And that means you don't have to worry about manual beat mixing anymore. The decks will sync up nicely, leaving you free to use some of the other things that we've got, like effects. That's what these paddles here are for. They're for controlling the effects. And nowadays there's a lot more effects you can use on the screen here as well. But all of that stuff comes down the line because you won't be learning that digital stuff until you've got back to doing what you used to do. Just because all these features are on here doesn't mean you've got to use them. So don't feel intimidated. Once you've done that, you're going to be interested in modern music, right? There's going to be music that's made you want to get back into DJing. So you're going to want to get that music and then you're going to want to learn, going to learn the tricks of DJing in the genre or genres that you like or across the genres because this gear makes DJing across BPMs and genres or what's called open format DJing really easy. So in order to do that, you're going to need to look at some specific help to get you up to speed on those genres. And so my final bit of advice to you, Danny, as someone returning to DJing is don't only find the money, don't only find the funds to buy your DJ gear, whether you go down the using your own laptop and adding a controller route or you go down the standalone route. Don't only uh, find some funds for that, but also find some funds to get some training to help you get back up to speed with the mixing. Uh, and I would tell you to go over to the Digital DJ Tips website and find this course, the Complete DJ course. And the reason for that is it's got three modules, bang in the middle of it. It's based on the book which you've no doubt seen, which is our book on how to DJ. But this course has got three modules in it, which do exactly what I just said. One of them brings you up to speed with how DJing has always been done using manual beat mixing, using headphones to cue your music up and so on. The second mixing module tells you all about the digital tricks that I mentioned. And the third mixing module tells you about mixing in different genres. And so once you follow those mixing modules in the middle of the course, hey, you're going to be bang up to speed. Danny, the best of luck. Let us know how you get on returning to DJ. Right now, if you're a regular here, you know that it's not just about the question that I choose to be the number one question at the top of this show because we're here for an hour. And now I can move on to all the questions coming in live of which there are lots and lots. So hello everyone who's joining us on the live stream. Uh, here is, uh, here's what it looks like to me in the studio. I get all your questions coming in down here and then I get a chance to pick out the ones that I think are gonna help the audience the most uh, and share them with everyone. So let's pull the laptop in a bit. 
bit to make it easier for me. Hello to everyone first. Hello to Mixmaster G in the Netherlands. Hello to Keshia over there in the Windy City. Happy Friday evening. Is it Friday already? Don't think so. I think you're, uh, you're willing for the weekend a bit too much. It's Thursday here. Uh, hello to Concrete Jungle. Hello to Mark Cox. Hello to... Uh, to the ruckus, good to see you, the ruckus. Uh, and Benny as well, I've been uh, enjoying helping you out, Benny, inside the courses this week. Thanks for asking all the questions you've been asking. Good day to everyone, but let's grab some questions. That's what we're here for. Uh, so, Brett says, to me, the best system if you're returning to DJing after a 40 year break is two Technics 1210s and a two channel mixer. Start right back at the beginning and practice beat maxing. Don't go straight, beat mixing. Don't go straight to a controller or you'll use sync. No, you won't because we're not gonna let you do that. That's what our training does. The training I just talked about starts you off doing exactly what Brett says there, learning the manual way of mixing before you do anything else. So I would disagree with you respectfully there, Brett. Definitely buy a controller. Don't waste the money, because it's a lot of money on real turntables and a mixer. Get a controller, but learn Remind yourself how it's done from the beginning, as I was just saying. But thank you very much for your, your view on that, Brett. Uh, so Mixmaster G says, well, for me, an iPad Pro would be a good start with Algorithms DJ Pro software on it. And then also with a streaming subscription, Tidal, Beatport, so on. Uh, if you like it, you can scale up. I think that's good if you already own an iPad Pro or an iPad. But if you don't, then, you know, for the price of an iPad, you could have one of these. And I'd say one of these is a lot more fun. Uh, so this is from DJ Ginormous, who just says what's up uh, nice to see so many of our regulars in there all chatting to each other it's good to see uh, this is neil who says hey phil i enjoy dropping in for these lives not just for dj tips but for phil's brilliant live streaming skills of switching camera and of screen sharing well i don't know about that we have our fair share of disasters uh, but for those of you that are interested we do do all this produce all this stuff live uh, and we do have producers like we, i do have my team with me but they're not in the room with me my team are commenting on the screen or in emergencies they're literally phoning me. Uh, so this does have to all be controlled by me. Uh, and so it's all done on this little box here. It's, uh, it's a, a live stream switching box and we've got cameras all over the studio. There's one above my head with a spare microphone. There's one over here, which probably isn't tuned into anything at the moment, but no, it's not, you see. It's, uh, it's looking all forlorn. But anyway, I've got one there. I've got one at the back here. If I want to show stuff at the back of the units, you've already seen the one over there on desk too, uh, but we can also bring in video and stuff. Um, it's a really nice little way of teaching. And it's, in fact, this studio is mainly used used for our teaching. It's mainly used for our DJ courses and for our um, lessons for our students. But we go live on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch twice a week to do it for everyone. So uh, that's why the, the studio is so good, because it gets used literally like 24 seven for teaching. Uh, but anyway, it's nice to have it. And I've made some improvements. You might have noticed the video looking a bit smoother um, and also the microphone sounding a bit louder and uh, the room sounding a bit quieter. Um, every new term when we come back here in September, we, we kind of like look around the place and we say, what needs changing? What's a mess? I've got to tidy up those wires up there. That's that's yet to be done. Uh, and we kind of like try and make a few little fixes. So that's what we've been doing all day today, actually. I was a bit worried that the studio wouldn't work properly, but it seems to be all right. Uh, right. So JSB Photo Rebel says, actually, Phil, I just did this. I was a house DJ back in the 90s uh, and the 2000s. I sold my turntables. Yeah, we've all been there. Uh, and I missed spinning. So I bought a new Mark Mix Track controller and I've been using that for the last 10 years. Yes, Mix Track kind of kicked it off a decade ago in the old controller world. Uh, so thanks for sharing. Um, so this comment or this question is from uh, another beginner DJ, D Rob T on YouTube, who says, I'm a beginner DJ and I'm looking to buy some speakers for a small gig around 60 people. Any recommendations? recommendations. My budget is around 3,000 UK pounds. So the recommendations I would give you if you want to play to 60 people, which isn't that small a gig really, is to rent or hire a PA system. Go and find your local DJ hire shop and rent a PA system for that gig because you'll get something that's higher quality. They'll probably come down and set it up for you and take it away afterwards for you. And really for 300 UK pounds, you're not going to get something that's an awful lot of quality. And also renting it first will give you a chance to see. Do you say rent in the US, by the way, or is it higher? Um, you'll get enough for um, 
uh, enough experience to know what in the end you want to buy. Uh, and if you start getting paid for this more gigs you're doing, you'll have more money to buy a better PA system. The rule of thumb, by the way, is about five watts of power per person. So you've got 60 people there, multiply that by five, you'd want a 300 watt PA system if you are planning on kind of like hiring something or so on. Or if it's outdoors, 10 watts per person, so you'd want a 600 watt PA system. It's only a very rough rule of thumb, but that's what uh, I've always used in this uh, circumstance. And really you're gonna want at least two speakers and at least one base speaker on the floor. Two speakers on poles and at least one on the floor for that. But go, go and rent it, DRUV or DRUV, uh, because uh, that way you won't make any silly mistakes and it's not an awfully big budget you've got there. Um, DJ Stu C says, I love cheap controllers. There's something really satisfying about being able to mix on small and cheap gear. You know, that was upside down. You know, this is actually fine. You could, uh, what I like about DJ gear, or rather I know I like a piece of DJ gear when I forget I'm using it. Because you really wanna just be, you know, you wanna to get to the end of a two hour session and just think, I really enjoyed that. And then remember that you're using a piece of gear that costs you 200 or 300 dollars or something. That's when I think you're using good gear. And honestly, so much of the gear that's out there nowadays can achieve that. It's incredible. You really, again, don't need to go and spend a lot of money on pro gear. It's lovely to have, but down the line when you're sure this is what you want to do. So thanks for that. Uh, so learning to DJ on just your headphones says you don't like my music is also a useful skill if you have neighbors. It is indeed a useful skill. Not all DJ gear will let you do it, but most will. Uh, for instance, this controller here uh, has got here, not only a headphone volume, but a headphone mix. And most DJ gear has that. And what that does is mix between the tracks that you are planning to play next. In other words, the tracks where you've pressed the headphone button here. So let's say you are playing that track there to the audience, your crossfader is over there, that one's playing. Press the headphone button there. And then with that control there, you will hear in your headphones the other channel. But then you can go like this and mix with the one that the audience is hearing. So by using this knob, you can actually switch between what the audience is hearing and what your headphones are hearing all in one and without having to have external speakers. Speakers. These speakers on this controller, because this controller has got built-in speakers, have their own volume, and you also have a volume control for anything else you've got plugged in at the back. But you're right, you could have all that turned down and do it all on your headphones if you want, and it's a good skill to have. And so I agree completely. Uh, learning to DJ on your headphones is definitely something to do, and a lot of pro DJs do it. James Hype does it, uh, to name one of our one of our tutors, and um, Laidback Luke does it as well. In-ear headphones plugged in there. No need for any monitors at all. Uh, so yes, agree completely. Thank you for that comment. You don't like my music. Uh, lots of people voting for Beatport to buy your music from. Uh, so I just tell my mother to pipe down when she complains about noise. Uh, so because I can't mix in headphones, says Stu. So <laughs> thank you for that, Stu. Uh, right, so this is from DJ Randall L who says, Hi Phil, has Digital DJ Tips ever thought about reviewing music stores? Your review, you, you review all the equipment uh, but equally important is the music stores. I ask because, base, uh, because Beatport have botched up their website and they need pressure. Right, you want us to be a campaign group. You want us to say, come on Beatport, sort it out. I wish we had so much influence. You know, at the end of the day, there are all kinds of places you can buy your music. And I think that the quality of the store is really not the important thing. It's the music you can get there. You know, I remember going far and wide to buy my records back in the day. By the way, that's only a few old records. I used to have a wall of them. Uh, and I'd go to places where the staff were rude, where the opening hours were antisocial, where you had to get there early because they only had two or three copies of each tune. But I got the best tunes from there. So I think, you know, if you, you find a download store um, that's hard to buy from, that only has a certain amount of music, and that is in a foreign language, but they've got some tracks that no one else has got, I think that's actually a bonus. Uh, if, every, if it's too easy to do, everyone will be doing it. I'm being a bit silly, but what I'm saying is that, yeah, it might be a nice idea if we recommend stores to you to go and get music from, but we're not really in the business of trying to figure out the best ones to use. Maybe we will. I mean, it's a, it's a good idea, but I, I don't know. I just think crate digging is one of those things that's very personal. Where you get your music from is something that, at the end of the day, is, is down to you, and it's about the music, not about how easy it was to get it. That said, Beatport, you've already mentioned. I think Amazon and iTunes are really good places. People might turn their noses up at them, but they've got a very wide range of music and it's cheap. I also think Juno Download and Tracks Source are other good places to get your music. I think joining a DJ download pool like 
BPM Supreme, DJ City, Zip DJ are all good ideas as well because they are a good way of getting modern remixes, a cappella in, a cappella out, clean mixes, short mixes, and paying one fee once a month and getting everything that you could possibly want as long as it's new music because the download pools are made for working DJs who are acquiring new music, right? So all those things I think are great. Uh, and we do cover that stuff. It's just we haven't sat down and said, you know, let's do a proper review of Beatport. We might do, you know, I've always talked myself into it here, DJ Randall. So thank you for the, uh, thank you for the uh, idea there. Uh, Dennis has been looking at this and Dennis says, why doesn't Denon make cheaper gear, even cheaper than their current gear? Well, I think because Denon and Newmark are actually both owned by the same company, uh, which is in music. And I guess Denon wouldn't want to be imposing or kind of like drifting down so low that it's kind of impacting the sales of this gear. Uh, I would say. So thank you for that. Uh, so the next question is, for, this is just Benny saying, the Mixstream Pro was my way coming back to DJing since it's an all-in-one, so I could just practice on the one thing. So yeah, good, uh, good thinking. So this is from Kev Human, who says, I've still not seen any DJ gear that has better input and output than the Roland DJ707M. I do hope that Roland make more controllers but I don't think they will. You know what? If you are thinking, what's the thinking DJ's controller? I don't need flash. I don't need expensive. I don't need trendy. I just want the one controller that does everything. I still think, and I'm gonna get it out now. It's down here. I know it's down here because I tidied up this studio yesterday and I know that I put it here, mainly so I could do exactly what I'm gonna do now. Just hold it up and show you. This is the Roland 707M. It's a Serato controller. It comes with the full version of Serato. It's under $1,000, not much under $1,000, but under $1,000. It is, to my mind, the peak controller for Serato. Might not look like much, but it's got everything you could need. It's got high audio quality. It's made for professionals. It's got control over everything Serato does, more or less, and if it hasn't, it's very easy to turn it on in the software. So you've got everything you need there. It's got proper control over Serato's effects, proper microphone inputs, and the outputs are incredible. Not only has it got two zones, so you can use one channel to play in a completely different room. So let's say you're a wedding DJ and you wanna play piped, music in the reception room next door, but you also want to be DJing in the main room. You can have music playing constantly through one channel out of a different set of outputs on the back off to that room and DJing on the other three channels, which is cool in itself. But it's got a load of audio processing over the output. So most DJ controllers, and I, I'm not, not slagging them off here because it's just normal. Most DJ controllers, you do your mixing here, it comes out through a master output and that's it. That's the end of it. This one here, it's got compressor, limiter, it's got EQ over the master output. And not only that, you can have your favorite settings and save them. So let's say you play in two or three venues. One venue's got bad bass response, so you need to boost your bass a bit. One venue is a bit shrill, so you need to bring down the mid-range a bit. You can have settings for all the different venues you play at here, and then you can just dial in the venue. And when you arrive there, press a button, and your controller is working for the way you like it set up for that venue. It's got incredible inputs and outputs. You can use it as an external mixer, plug your decks in, plug your CDs in as well. It's just a wonderful controller. So if you do want something that doesn't look flash, but that does more than any other controllers do, I thoroughly recommend this one, the Roland 707M. They might not be making more controllers anytime soon, but it's still available. I did I actually check with them this year. Is it still available? And they were like, yep, very much so. Uh, and the M stands for mobile, 707M, M mobile, because it's made for mobile DJs. Stick this, you might say, well, I'm gonna look a bit cheap with DJ on one of these, but you're not. Buy a big hard case with a proper wooden lid. You know the type I mean, that are kind of covered in vinyl, that have got big metal corners? Buy a big hard case for this, plug it in, put it on a decent stand with good speakers, you're gonna look as professional as anyone. I love it, I recommend it to anyone. But not beginners, you don't need all that. Beginners, you don't need all that, spend less. Uh, right, what else have we got here from you guys and girls today? Uh, this is from uh, SJ Mixit on YouTube. What's the difference, says SJ Mixit, with using the sync button on your DJ gear, here's the sync buttons, and just looking at the BPMs on the waveforms and matching them, because there's a BPM here, it's 120, it says there, 
this BPM here, it's a bit small on, on your screen, I, I know. But yes, so I could load, like you did with CDs, I could load a track onto the other deck now. Uh, let's say I wanted that track there to be loaded onto that deck. So now I've got a track on each deck. That one is, again, it's probably a bit small for you guys. That's saying 125, that's saying 126. I could just move that one till that one's on 125, right? So now they're at the same speed. So why do I need to use the sync button to line the tracks up? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's even quicker than using the faders. Two, the sync button doesn't only line up the, uh, doesn't only uh, make the beats the same, so that the, you know, the, the tracks are uh, playing at the same speed, but it lines the beats up as well. So that means that the, you're not gonna get do 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 You're not gonna have to put your headphones on and nudge the track, you know, like slow it down a bit, slow that one down a bit, or speed that one up a bit. You're not gonna have to figure out which one's ahead and which one's behind. Just a tap of the sync button will do that for you. And that frees you up to do other things, to be working the EQs, to be playing with effects, or frankly, just to be having a good time in the DJ booth or chatting to your crowd or whatever. So look, it just takes out a bit of the, what I call monkey work. There's nothing clever or hard about matching the BPMs of tracks. Yes, there's a bit of a skill to it, but there's a bit of a skill to riding a bike. No one says, wow, you can ride a bike, you're brilliant. Uh, it's no harder than that, so it just makes it easier for you, and why not use it, it's there. So that's, it's, it's kind of like, a bit better than just matching the BPMs using the uh, the faders, that's why. Right, what else have we got here? We are live, by the way, if you've just joined us, it's Digital DJ Tips, me, Phil Morse. We're live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, and we're live on Twitch. And you can watch the recording of this on Facebook and YouTube afterwards. We've answered lots of questions, including uh, getting back to DJing after 40 years. Danny asked a question at the top of the show, uh, and we went into a couple of ways that you can do that, a couple of types of gear that you might want to use. Now, before we go back to your questions, I'm going to just let you know about something that's going on here at Digital DJ Tips right now. If you head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, this is the Digital DJ Tips website, uh, and click on the blog at the top and scroll down, you will see this panel here. It's back. Digital DJ Lab. Try the world's best DJ mixing training program for a month for just a dollar. Digital DJ Lab is not for beginners. This isn't for you, Danny. This is for DJs who are doing this, who've done this for many years, who are playing gigs, who are recording mixes, who are fully signed up. You probably have got better gear than the gear we've been talking about today, and you probably make money doing this. But what you want is inspiration. What you want is cutting edge stuff. What you want is to know how the best DJs are doing it today. You want tricks. You want to know how to promote yourself better. You want to know how to organize your music better. You want to know how to do some of the things you see DJs doing on Boiler Rooms and YouTube and so on. This is our only subscription product. All of our courses, you buy them and they're yours for life. But once you've got a course or two, once you know where you're going, this is the add-on that you need. And this is yours added to by us every month. And you get all these courses that you're seeing here. There's at least 80 what we call action plans that teach you all kinds of new tricks and techniques. And there's, again, at least, I'm gonna guess about 80, 90, maybe even 100 mixed deconstructions where we look at tricks by other DJs and show you how they're done. And as I say, we add to it every single month, so there will always be something here for you. This is not a decision to take lightly. This is a course that you're gonna to need to, to use every month to make it worth your while. And so we want you to make that decision while actually having a look at it. We want you to see what's in there before deciding if it's for you or not. And that's why at the moment, your first month of lab is just $1 head to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on that advert, read about it, and then subscribe for a dollar. And if it's for you, you don't have to do anything else. If it isn't for you, just tell us in a month's time, we'll cancel that subscription. Uh, it's easy as that. Take a look because there's many, many thousands of DJs who've got a lot of value out of Digital DJ Lab. And it could just be that you're the next one. It's very rarely that we do this one month trial. Like it's like uh, uh, once or twice a year. It's not something we do all the time. So this is your chance right now. It actually went live, I think earlier on today or maybe yesterday evening, very recently anyway. So it's gonna be there. You don't have to do it today. It's gonna to be there for a, a couple of weeks, uh, a week actually, I think. Um, but do do it soon. Right? Don't, don't miss this week because then it'll go away again. Right, back to your questions. Uh, and again, uh, lots and lots of them coming in. Uh, the next one is from, uh, I'm gonna pick a question here from uh, Doe, who says, I 
I'm not happy with Beatport either. But then again, you don't like my music says Beatport has recently got a lot better in uh, in load time. So pluses and minuses for Beatport. Shu says track source for me. I mentioned track source, didn't I? Um, Ink, Inky the Cat says, Phil, are you talking about Eastern Block? You're showing your age there, Inky the Cat. I actually, Eastern Block, for those that don't know, was a, a, one of the most famous record stores in the world. It's in Manchester in England back in the day. And they were famously rude. But I wouldn't say they are. It's just that, I don't know. Uh, I got to know them very well in there. And in the end, I was downstairs spending hours listening to the music in there privately. Um, so um, no, I loved Eastern Block. Uh, but anyway, no, rec record stores. I miss them. I do miss them sometimes. Uh, this is from SJ Mixit, who says, I love mixing, uh, but uh, I dislike searching through thousands of tunes to only end up with a handful because of being selective and fussy. Let me talk to you about how you can make that process of going from searching through thousands of tunes to find the ones you want to play to actually having them make it more painless because there is a way of doing it and we actually talk about it in the book. We have something in the book which we call the playlist triangle and I'm going to try and find it for you now. The playlist triangle is a way of choosing music that makes it easier to, to sort through all the world's music uh, and get the stuff that you want to play painlessly. So here is where we talk about it in the book. Uh, preparing, importing and tagging your music and this triangle here is what it's all about. And the idea is that at the bottom of the triangle you've got all the world's music, then you've got as you move up the triangle the, the number of tunes available to you gets lower and lower. Then we've got the music you've heard which is going to be less than all the world's music, of course it is. Then we've got the areas where we teach you the best way of doing it which is shortlisting and buying. So shortlisting is a way of quickly going from hearing music to adding it to a shortlist and this involves the clever use of streaming services, recommendation engines and Shazam. And then we get to the music you've bought and how we quickly get that music packed for our gigs. So when we're at our gigs we're not going through our whole collection which is going to be hard because it could be thousands of songs. Uh, we know what we want to play at the gig already. We taught you about it took you it through how to do that. And then the music you play, of course, is a very tiny fraction of where you started at the bottom. This is one of our five steps of DJing that we talk about in the book. And it's a way of programming in time to do this stuff every week so that it, you stay on top of it, you know you're not missing the good tunes, and you're getting a really good library of stuff while spending the least possible time doing it. You should get the book and have a read of it, to be quite honest with you there. That's going to really help you. So if you want a copy of the book, uh, you get that for free from us. Uh, you can go and buy it on Amazon, of course. You can get it in book bookstores. You can get an Audible version uh, if you like to listen to audiobooks. You can also get a Kindle version uh, or, or Kobo or wherever you get your your, your um digital books from. It's in all those places, but you can also get a copy from us. There's two ways of getting a copy of the book from us. The first way is to head to the Digital DJ Tips website and the book is online there. So you go to our book at the top of the website. Here it is. This is the exact book that I just held up. Every single word that's in the book is in here, but you can read it online. And the good bit about reading the book online is that you can see the videos. There are videos in the book where I give you a short code so you can go and look at them. But they're all embedded in the online version of the book and here they are. So you can actually just watch them on, on the website. But you can also download a PDF of the book from here. Uh, you just sign up to Digital DJ Tips. It's free to sign up and in doing that we'll give you a PDF of the book uh, for nothing. But more importantly you get our Tuesday DJ Tips email where we help you become a better DJ. We give you free lessons from our courses. There might be stuff from Jazzy Jeff or Layback Luke or Angelo or um, any of our other tutors of course. Uh, and also uh, you get uh, all the news about what we've been doing. So for instance if we've reviewed new DJ gear or if we've published a new article, some new free training, it's all in that email. So if you don't want to miss anything, forget missing music for a minute, if you don't want to miss anything going on in the DJ world, uh, anything that could help you become a better DJ, that's the place to find it all. So go sign up. It's free uh, and you can click the join link at the top of the website or go to the book page and click the download book PDF uh, and we'll give you the book there. Right, so more questions. Let's go there and uh, Try and squeeze another 10 minutes worth of your questions in before I've got to go, people. Uh, this one is then from uh, Benny, who says, I just remember starting going through track, I just recently, sorry, started going through Track Source, Track Source being a DJ store, and I'm loving grabbing the house music that I've been missing out on, uh, and I've been enjoying the new stuff on there as well as the older music. Oh, well, there's another vote for Track Source. Alex says, 
any news if Pioneer DJ has an XZ2 or an XZ2 in the pipeline. I've been waiting patiently to upgrade this wonderful system since 2021. No, we haven't got any news. I think their Opus Quad was kind of like their upgrade, but a lot of people said, well, it's, that's not quite an upgrade. And I know where you're coming from. So I think they will do at some point, but we haven't got any uh, news on that. So PA question from Mark who says, do you route audio cables from a mixer to a sub and then to the tops or the other way? Usually the audio cables will go from the mixer to the sub. So the way people say, you know, if you're plugging in from a DJ unit, you're plugging into um, speakers, normally, right, there's two outputs on the back, on the back, right? One goes to one speaker, one goes to the other. So if you've got a subwoofer, and for those of you who don't know what a subwoofer is, it's a big speaker on the floor that just handles the boom, 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 right? If you've got a subwoofer, where does that plug in? Normally, depending upon the DJ PA you're running, you'll run the left and right out of your DJ gear into the subwoofer, and the subwoofer will then have a left and right to go off to the other speakers. That's usually the case, but depending upon the PA system, it might be different. So just consult the instructions that come with the PA, but don't worry, PA systems are designed to be able to add subwoofers to them, so don't think that you won't be able to do it. It's worth having a check before you buy, of course, but that's how it works uh, in, uh, in, uh, in theory anyway. So this next question then is from, um, I'm gonna go for this question from Raymond, who says, I recently begun enjoying jazz music a whole lot more than any other genre. Where do you suggest I get a good batch of jazz to play out? Uh, besides, of course, purchasing every song today, uh, every, every song I hear and like. Um, well, purchasing every song you hear and like is a, is a good start. You know, once you start moving away from dance music, then Beatport, Track Source and so on, maybe not a good start. Although you could look at jazz house in genres in those places and find where jazz and dance music crosses over. If you're going for straight jazz, you're looking at the mainstream download services. So while quite often it's either a store or a streaming service, there are streaming services that also sell music. And one that it might be worth taking a look at look at is Cobuzz, Q-O-B-U-Z, Cobuzz. Uh, it's the one I use actually uh, for different reasons to jazz, but anyway, it's the one I use. It's a European, in fact, it's a French streaming service. They've got, they're very good on that kind of genre. They're good on classical and jazz and the kind of genres that are a bit underrepresented elsewhere. But more importantly, they are also a download store. So you can listen to the music there, find what you like and buy it. And there's subscriptions that mean the buying becomes cheaper if you're subscribed at a higher subscription and that kind of thing. So look at Cobuzz there. Let me know how you get on with that. I'd be interested to hear, Raymond, what you think. Uh, and thank you for being there on Facebook. Hello to all our Facebook uh, viewers here today. SJ Mixit says, my first gig was in 1988. My last gig was in 2010. How would you get a DJ booking in these modern times? I've got a Mixcloud account with nearly four and a half thousand followers. Is it about numbers? No, it's not about numbers. It's about your audience, SJ Mixit. You know, the reason that you were DJing from 1990, 1988 to 2010 is that you were going out from 1988 to 2010, right? So you were part of the scene where you were DJing. That's how it works. If you're not part of the scene where you're DJing, you're gonna find it very, very hard to get gigs. And I could argue that actually you don't deserve to get gigs because the people who are part of that scene deserve to get those gigs. They know the music, they know the people, they know how to build the vibe. And you're out of touch with that. I would say that you need to get into a scene that you can actually enjoy being part of today. I'll give you a very good example. When I went across to New Jersey to work with a DJ called Jason Janai, we did some wedding DJ training once upon a time with Jason. He's a very, very uh, successful wedding DJ in the US. When I headed out there to, to work with Jason, uh, I stayed in a hotel that Jason booked me into that was kind of a small town hotel in a small town. Very nice place, but very traditional United States kind of small, small hotel. And it had a small bar with a restaurant. But at the weekend, there's a DJ in that bar. Now, this was a small town. This was a quiet town. And this bar held about 100 people. And I went down there at 11 o'clock in the, in the evening and the DJ who was playing was playing house music. I would call it Todd Terry style retro house to an audience of people his age, 40s. They were in, all in their 40s. I'd say more divorcees than single people. And it was brilliant. And I just got a real rush of, good on you, pal. So I started talking to him. And this guy had seen a gap 
He'd seen that his friends were getting married, having kids, and then it all went wrong, and they ended up getting divorced, and you know. Uh, and he realised that if he could put a night on from like, say, seven or eight in the evening till midnight at the weekend, specifically playing music that these people liked and went out and enjoyed when they were young, he might be able to get something going. And he had 50 people on his dance floor. It was brilliant, lovely atmosphere. Everyone dancing to what I would call pretty underground, although in his case, retro music, because. That's what the audience wanted. He had spotted a niche and it was people he knew and people that he would be happy to be on that dance floor if he wasn't DJing. I think that's the thing. So you need to find a scene that you genuinely can feel part of and can help to nurture now. And it's probably going to be people your age. You're probably going to be looking to DJ at places that are a restaurant earlier in the night and then turn into a dance floor later. You know the kind of thing I'm talking about, right? So my advice would be to try and get involved in a scene where you can genuinely be part of it. And as I said earlier, you know, DJing is not a young person's game anymore. It's more than nightclubs nowadays. Having great music from someone who wants to play it doesn't have to be something that is limited by the age that you are. So uh, enjoy, good luck, I'd love to know how you get on there. Uh, right, so let's grab a question, try and find something a little bit different now. Uh, this is then something from, a lot of you talking about getting back into DJ, which is fine, it's how we started. Um, QZ says, it's a whole new world I've, re I've entered or re-entered. Now I'm finally getting it uh, and I'm happy. I'll only get better and better now. You never lose old skills, you just add to them. I love this channel and I love you all in the chat. DJing is the best. Oh, thank you. It's so nice to hear that kind of positivity going on here. Uh, and Ro Roman or Roman says, I'm 60. I was at secondary high school and in university. Then I had a big pause from DJing. I started again just recently with digital. Uh, my first setup was a small portable reloop with a tablet. Uh, I'm still using algorithms, tablet software, it's great. Uh, and uh, I'm using Rekordbox now though as well. I'm considering upgrading to a bigger controller and I'm renting a PA system. Yeah, so you're doing exactly what I suggested, right? You started with something small and moved up. So Roman, great, inspiring to hear that you are getting back into it. Uh, right, let's talk to talk about Vandaloo. Uh, this isn't Vindaloo, it's Vandaloo on YouTube. Similar question to your first question. I'm starting again after a 30 year break. Would I, w I would like a DJ controller that I could also hook up to turntables. Just one turntable maybe. Uh, right, so there are DJ controllers that, you know, to get a DJ controller that has got inputs around the back that you can also plug in turntables, it becomes expensive. But there is a middle ground. If you just want to plug one turntable in, just so you can play the odd record through your DJ controller, you might want to consider getting one that's got a single auxiliary input and then get a turntable that can output a line or more, more likely get a, a phono preamp, which is just a little amplifier that goes between your DJ turntable and your controller to get it up to the same level as a CD or anything else you could plug into an auxiliary input. Turntables need a special input because their outputs are so low normally and that's why you have what are called phono plugs on the back of controllers. Otherwise, if you do want to go the full way, and to be honest with you, if you're starting to plug turntables in, I would get something that can handle it. I want to push you back to this thing. It's under a grand. It's got two full turntables in, inputs on the back. Nice sounding phono preamps. Uh, yeah, it's a good one, the Roland 707M. Best of both worlds there on that one. Uh, so good luck. A lot of people want to listen to their music, DJ with their old records and so on, as well as DJing digitally, I, I agree. However, I would also say it might be worth just saying, you know what, when it comes to DJing, I'm going to do it all digitally. I'm just going to get the same records again digitally, and if I have to, I'll rip them, but I'll just go and buy them again. Uh, because look, $99 a song at the moment uh, these days, so it's not a big outlay to get your 100 favourites uh, digitally and then forget trying to queue up records and do all that as well. When I started, I wanted to incorporate my old CDs and my old record decks and digital, and then very quickly, CDs and record decks went to the side and I was all digital, and that's quite a normal story, really. Uh, this is from someone on Facebook, on our, on, our, um, on our group over on Facebook. Hello to our global DJ network people, uh, who says, my five-year-old loves pressing the buttons on my controller, so I'm thinking of getting her a cheap or second-hand controller. What would you recommend? It may need to be connected to an old iPad. Why don't you just let them play on the iPad and use the DJ stuff on there, on the screen of the iPad? If you do want something that can be connected to the iPad, uh, What's cheap and old that connects that can connect to an old iPad? Not sure off the top of my head, really. If anyone's got any suggestions, uh, down in the comments on Facebook in Global DJ Network, help out our user there uh, on that. And you know, this is one I really like on the iPad. 
not that controller there that I just picked up, although that was a nice one for another time that. But this one here, this is the Reloop Buddy. And the Reloop Buddy is a controller that's got a slot on the back. So you can plug an iPad, put an iPad there, and then you plug your iPad in on the side. And you've now got a kind of all-in-one thing with the iPad, uh, easy to control. This is working with Algorithms DJ Pro AI software. It's a really nice little unit, uh, and equally nice. I have to give a shout out to our friends over there at Decksaver who make this cover as well, which makes all the difference. Unbreakable thing, which will protect your delicate little faders. Uh, but yeah, the Reloop Buddy, but that's not a cheap controller and your daughter might well break it. So uh, why not just let her play with the iPad? iPads are pretty indestructible, right? That could be the way to go. Uh, right, people, I need to get out here now. It's been an absolute pleasure. Please do give me a like, a thumbs up, a share, a heart, whatever you can do on whatever platform you're watching on. Those things do help. Uh, and it does feel a little bit like talking into the into the wide world here with, uh, with, you know, without any real audience in front of me. So I see those things and it makes me realize that we are helping and we are doing, uh, we are doing our bit to push DJing forward, which is what we're here for, of course. Remember Digital DJ Lab, our digital DJ program for serious DJs is available now for just a dollar, only for a very short while. So head over to Digital DJ Tips and click on Digital DJ Lab, the big advert on the blog homepage uh, to try our subscription program for just a dollar. Uh, it's very rarely we do this and it costs an awful lot more than that normally. So this is your chance to see why people subscribe to this for years and years and years and how it helps them to become better DJs. Meanwhile, do take a look at the blog anyway. There's an awful lot of stuff going on over there as ever, digitaldjtips.com. Uh, I'm back again on Tuesday uh, for another live lesson where I'm not sure what it will be about, but we will be teaching something uh, for free just like we do inside our courses, but on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Come join us for that, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and I'm back here this time next week, Thursday, for another Thursday Q&A Live. Until then, get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.